Hello, welcome back to story time with Kayfish. Kayfish, drunk story time with Kayfish. Holy cow! I'm the Kayfish. This is the bad drunk. This is bad. This is so bad. I am drowning it in shamboard to make it drinkable. That said, my nose is a little bit numb, which means I'm nicely into my cups. And we are going to read, it's not that bad when you get used to it, by Chamil. And I would like to say hello to those who watch with Chamil. I actually had a much better intro for that, but I forgot it. Okay, hands of who's surprised for that. I see no hands. <laughs> okay, so not so bad when you get used to it. I'm very regretfully drinking Heart of Gold Chardonnay. I will never buy this again. <sighs> Chapter 28, Caterpillar. The prompt is behind the couch. Things between him and Crowley had become rather more adventurous of late, and Aziraphale couldn't be happier about it. After all, what was the use in defeating heaven and hell if you don't take advantage of your newfound freedom to get a little kinky with your partner of choice? Same, right? He was kneeling on the carpet of his bookshop, anticipating the moment his lover would come back and see to him. His hands were tied behind his back. A solid steel spreader bar was keeping his ankles apart. And a bite gag pressed heavily on his tongue, preventing him from talking. It was splendid. For an extra thrill, Crowley had also put a curse on a black velvet collar that stripped Aziraphale of all his powers, as long as he was wearing it. It had all been very thoroughly planned. The angel had gotten a few relevant, relevant books on the subject, and he and Crowley had done some research together. Now, collar aside, he was completely naked and helpless and perfectly content about it. He wished Crowley would come back to give him some relief, but at the same time, oh, the weight was so sweet. His cock gave an, an excited twitch when he heard the bell over the front door ring. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> but it's not somebody looking for a book. Crowley had used a little miracle to make sure no human would get through. Oh, where's the fun in that? So his ear felt, felt perfectly safe for all that he was so terribly exposed. <laughs> then he heard Gabriel's voice booming in the book. how to do until the moment comes when we have to do them. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Aziraphale, for example, had no idea he could tip forward, cheek, shoulders, knees, and toes against the floor and crawl like a caterpillar. <laughs> and he found refuge behind the nearest couch <laughs> just before Gabriel turned the last corner. <laughs> My cheeks hurt. <laughs> oh, 
I just wanted to talk, Aziraphale. Please come out now. Gabriel ordered. <laughs> Aziraphale could perfectly picture the eye roll he couldn't see from his hiding spot. Leave it to leave it to Gabriel to sound as if Aziraphale was being unreasonable, not showing up for him. As if the last time they'd seen each other, the Archangel hadn't tried to murder him. And sure, that had been crawling inside Aziraphale's body, but Gabriel hadn't known that, had he? The angel heard the sofa creaking under Aziraphale's under shit. <laughs> the angel heard the sofa creaking under Gabriel's weight and realized with mounting horror his unexpected guest had sat down. I will wait here, <laughs> Gabriel shouted. As if he thought Aziraphale was hiding behind some corner awaiting his departure, avoiding him on purpose. Which he was, but that's not the point. <laughs> God. <laughs> Ten minutes went by very, very slowly. Aziraphale didn't dare breathe excessively conscious about the nakedness of his ass sticking up in the air only a couple of feet behind Gabriel's wide shoulders. Then the archangel groaned. I can't believe there's no television here, he muttered to himself. Aziraphale heard shuffling, then the faint sound of something being put down, and realized Gabriel was going through the books he'd left on the coffee table, probably picking out something to kill time. Oh no, not the books he'd left on the coffee table. What the fuck did you read? Pornography. <laughs> Pornography, Gabriel asked to no one in particular. Aziraphale's face against the floor burned hot. Is it supposed to be this sticky? The angel stared hard at a dust bunny under a bookcase, wishing to be anywhere else in the world but where he currently was. <laughs> God! Ah! Gabriel exclaimed. It must be why humans lick their fingers when they read. <laughs> Zerfield closed his eyes and refused refused <laughs> to picture his former boss licking his fingers clean from, well, his or Crowley's spunk. He couldn't quite remember, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> oh. <laughs> After a few minutes of blessed silence, he heard a loud thump and guessed Gabriel, uncivilized brute that he was, had ungracefully dumped whatever book he'd been reading. Don't see the appeal. More shuffling. A book fell to the floor. Aziraphale flushed with rage and said nothing. This one, though. More silence. More waiting. Aziraphale's back was starting to protest his unconventional yoga pose. Um, Gabriel said, and the angel heard something unusual in his voice. Uncertainty? What are you up for, buddy? For a terrifying moment, Aziraphale thought Gabriel had spotted him and was talking to him. Then he... <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> He heard the sound of a zipper being opened, did the math in his head, and realized with consternation that the archangel had been talking to his own penis. <laughs> Is this how... Oh, hey. That's nice. God. <laughs> I'm hearing all of this in John Hamm's voice, and I just can't take it. 
Aziraphale wished the floor would open bet under his knees and swallow him. But instead, he was stuck there, listening to the rhythmic slap of Gabriel's hand against his own groin. Good lord. <laughs> It went on for several minutes until the angel heard a rustling of feet and looked to the left, realizing Crowley had just come back and was staring open-mouthed at the archangel jerking off on the sofa, who thankfully hadn't spotted him yet. <laughs> Crowley and his ear fell locked gazes. What the fuck? Crowley mouthed silently. Aziraphale open, only opened his eyes wider, urging his lover to intervene. <laughs> no. <laughs> Crowley snapped his fingers, and a moment later, Aziraphale found himself safe, sound, and unrestrained in Crowley's bedroom. <laughs> Thanks, somebody. He said, massaging his wrists. I need an exceptionally long bath after this. I'm somebody, <laughs> Crowley shouted after him as he followed him into the bathroom. In the bookshop, Gabriel finished himself off with a loud groan. As he had never done this before, he didn't know he was going to make a mess all over his own hand his trousers, and the hardcore BDSM mug he kept open on his knees. So he was quite surprised at all the white stuff spurting out of him. <laughs> he shrugged, closed the dirty book with a squish, and put it back on the table before leaving. <laughs> Oh my god, that was fucking amazing. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> what was the fucking prompt for this? Behind the couch. <laughs> <laughs> that was great holy shit <laughs> I hate Gabriel okay I don't hate him as much as I hate Sandalman Sandalfon but Gabriel's a jerk <laughs> but <laughs> this was hilarious oh my god oh my god <laughs> some cheese <laughs> to go with my wine okay serious business <sighs> alright so we're going to move on to chapter 29 <laughs> the hand of the devil the prompt is prophecies Okay, fine. Maybe Aziraphale is a bit more agitated than he normally would be. It's just, it's a very stressful time in his existence. A lovely time, mind you, but stressful all the same. Because, well, the world didn't end and things slowly started to train. <sighs> things slowly started to change between him, between him and Crowley. <laughs> I think I should stop. <laughs> a simple smile turned into a long, meaningful moment when their eyes locked, and then they were both leaning towards each other, 
Their usual meeting spots turn into places to walk hand in hand, and their nights of drinking together turn into steamy makeout sessions. That's the thing. They've been taking it slow, keeping all their clothes on, all the time. It didn't make sense to rush into this, they reasoned, now that they have all the time in the world. And sure, Aziraphale almost came in his underpants just yesterday because of some very rigorous, fully clothed dry humping, but... Excuse me. He's stressed, is the point. He's tense and his head is up in the clouds all the time and he was really not expecting Anathema to send him a picture on the brand new smartphone Crowley, Crowley had just got for him. Aziraphale immediately recognized it as something penned by Agnes Nutter. Something about how the hand of the devil would crumble and the fall would be great. But he didn't really pay much attention because immediately after the picture, he got another message from Anathema urging him to go check on Crowley, technically the hand of the devil on earth, and make sure he was all right. So he ran. Oh dear. Wait a minute. Hand of crumble would, hand of crumble would devil. Mm -hmm. Hand of the devil would crumble and the fall would be great. I got nothing. He ran while vaguely wondering where Anathema had just got more Agnes Nutter prophecies. Is there another book? And can he get his hands on it? Crowley has given him a key to his flat and an open invitation to come by whenever, so he lets himself in as quickly as possible. Just to freeze in the hallway when he hears a very familiar moan coming from the bedroom. Then another. Oh dear, seems like Crowley's alive and, well, he sounds well. He sounds great, to be honest, and, oh, maybe he shouldn't disturb him. Surely, as long as Aziraphale stays close enough to make sure the demon is fine, he'll be safe and sound. Yes, yes, he can do that. Just hang in the hallway and keep guard. He was the first guardian in history, after all, wasn't he? Oh. I kind of entered my end in there. He was the first guardian of history, wasn't he? And sure, he can pretty much hear everything that's going on in the bedroom from his guarding spot, but that's just a coincidence. What is going on in the bedroom anyway? It sounds like Crowley is going at it quite intensely. His voice clambers and cracks, and Aziraphale holds his breath. And then it subdues. Crowley mutters something and starts all over again, even louder than before. Is he, is he bringing his, himself just at the very edge and then letting go before he can finish? Aziraphale swallows, palming down the erection, demanding to burst free of its of his dear old trousers. He's not sure how much time he spends there. It's sweet, sweet torture to listen to Crowley's ragged breathing, his sighs, his whimpers. To imagine him on his knees or on his back, naked or half clothed still, half clothed still, his face pressed into a pillow or head thrown back in pleasure, gripping his hard cock in those strong fingers of his or fingering himself till he's sore and satisfied. Aziraphale wipes his forehead with a handkerchief. He technically doesn't need it. He just likes doing it. And then a loud bang. And he doesn't even think before rushing into the room. He finds Crowley on his ass on the floor, his stomach and thighs covered in cum, one foot stuck in the sheets and the one leg still hanging over the edge of the bed, wearing nothing but his socks, black lipstick, and a tie. What? <laughs> what the fuck is he wearing? <laughs> because I also have a masturbation outfit. <laughs>
He's also clutching his right hand. As he looks up at Aziraphale. Crap. <laughs> Crap, he offers by way of explanation. And then it seems like all words desert him. As he slowly realizes what is happening. What? What were you doing? Aziraphale <laughs> hears himself asking. Although he very well knows. Really, it should be Crowley who's asking him what he's doing here, not the other way around. Crowley makes a complicated series of jumbled sounds. He looks at his cramping hand as if for help, at his foot stuck over the bed, at the hot big vibrator buzzing quietly on the sheets, <laughs> at his stomach covered in jizz. <laughs> And finally looks back at his hair fell. Yoga. <laughs> that is fucking magic. <laughs> what were you doing? <laughs> Dude, I never realized how much I wanted to do yoga. <laughs> <laughs> Yoga. <laughs> oh, it's fucking, fucking funny. <laughs> All right, chapter thirty. <sighs> Give me a second. Drunk story time is serious business. I have to give each chapter its own gravitas. Chapter 30, Speed Dial. The prompt for this one is, you shall have no other gods before me. It's one of the, th though, pfft. It was one of those things that had started up slowly and then completely snowballed out of control. It had started with Crowley worshiping Aziraphale's hand, sucking languidly every finger and then licking in between. Brittle bush, brittle bush eyes fixed on the squirming angel above him. I'm sorry, I had to look that up. I've never heard that that word before. It's a plant. In Mexico. <laughs> I've never heard that word before. Serious business. Brittle bush eyes fixed on the squ It's yellow. That's why, right? Please tell me I'm right. Because <laughs> I'm a stupid. <laughs> okay. Brittle bush eyes fixed on the squirming angel above him. Aziraphale had sat in his armchair and chastised him between a choked moan and a little push of his fingers farther deep into Crowley's mouth and the demon had of course kept going it continued with Crowley getting two handfuls of angel thighs and squeezing squeezing them hard as he called them a paragon of perfection the best thing on this goddamned planet Crowley that's blasphemy Aziraphale had protested but Crowley had just pointed at himself. Demon, he'd said, blasphemy is my breakfast. <laughs> what does he have for lunch? That's my question. And so on, until the day they truly crossed the line. 
Aziraphale was tied to the headboard of their bed, and Crowley was straddling his knees, laser-focused on him. One hand around the angel's cock, strolling, stroking him slowly. Oh my god, I really need to stop drinking. Just a second. One hand around the angel's cock, stroking him slowly. Look at it. The demon purred, giving it an indulgent squeeze. Religious ecstasy has got nothing on this. Crowley, Aziraphale gasped in that offended tone of his that suggested he wanted to get much more offended than that and to please continue. I'm serious. Crowley gave his cock a sloppy, sloppy lick, starting from his balls all the way up to the dribbling tip. God wishes she had something like this to play with. Uh, Crowley. Aziraphale strained against the thick black rope restraining his wrists, cock twitching and leaking some more. You can't, you can't say things like that. She'll hear you. <laughs> oh, I hope she does. Crowley smirked as he tucked a stray strand of hair behind his ear and opened his lips to taste him. In that moment, oh no. <laughs> In that moment, a bright beam of light pierced through the ceiling of their bedroom, falling squarely on Aziraphale's chest and burning off the very tips of Crowley's hair. Would have cut off all his split ends had he had any. Crowley threw himself off the bed so fast he almost took the angel's cock with him, remembering at the very last second to let go of it. This ends now. God's voice made all the hairs on Crowley's legs and arms stand up like static electricity. <laughs> Aziraphale vanished his restraints and covered his groin with both hands. Why? <laughs> Like she doesn't know what's beneath her hands, bro. <laughs> of course, of, uh, of course, I'm, I'm so sorry, Almighty, forgive us, for he, he doesn't know what he's doing. Oh, you had to use like actual biblical there. <laughs> hey, I know very well what I'm doing. Ar Crowley argued, getting a pillow thrown at his dick. And <laughs> he caught it with both hands and held it there. Crowley, you can't just stand naked in front of God. Aziraphale whisper shouted at him, which Crowley thought was very silly, considering the Almighty could hear everything. What? Why not? He dropped the pillow, exposing his entire body again. He gestured vaguely towards, toward his half-mass dick. It had been somewhat discouraged by being almost burned off the face of the earth. She made this. She knows what it's like. Still. <laughs> Actually, now that I think think about it. Oh no, what the fuck are you about to do? Crowley stepped closer to the spotlight, taking care to keep safely out of its circumference. Look, he looked up towards the heavens. Hey, you don't talk to me during the flood. You don't answer during the Black Plague. You don't show your face during the Napoleonic Wars. But this is the thing that summons you? Seriously? <laughs> My decisions are not you to are not for you to comprehend. I am not to be questioned. With that, the light turned off, leaving a red-faced angel with his hands over his dick and a demon in his birthday suit whose hair smelled vaguely like roast 
chicken. Crawley quickly climbed back on the bed. Angel, get those hands out of the way. <laughs> what? Aziraphale exclaimed, exclaimed, squirming back. Why? I need to talk to God. <laughs> God. Fuck. Damn it. <laughs> I need to talk to God. And Aziraphale's dick is apparently the way to do that. <laughs> Oh my god, it was hilarious. <laughs> ah. <laughs> okay, three painfully hilarious chapters. Oh my god. <laughs> ah, from Jamil. With the. <laughs> I'm, I'm about to tell a story. You ready to hear my story? <laughs> okay. I was living with what at the time was my boyfriend's parents. I was living in their house without my boyfriend, which let's just skip over that whole problem. Anyway, so I'm living in their house. Okay, I'm a healthy female person. And I was masturbating. And my boyfriend's mother did not quite understand um, personal time, I guess. Or the fact that the door being closed meant don't come in. And she knocked and then open the door. Now I was using a vibrator at the time and did not even have the time to turn it off. Okay. So, and my boyfriend's mother came in and sat on my bed. <laughs> As I was like, I was like 19, I was like 19 or 20 years old and just mortified by the fact that first of all, this woman did not even wait for me to say, come in, um, but just like knock, knock and open the door and came in. I'm masturbating with a vibrator. That is not silent, obviously. You know, it's not like I can just stop moving my hand. And came in, sat on the bed to have a conversation with me. And I had the conversation with her, you know, because I am a stupid person, as it turns out, that did not have the cojones to say, Excuse me, you didn't knock. I was not prepared for you to come in the door. But, yeah, she sat on the bed while I was trying desperately to not sound like I'd been masturbating. Because I was 19. Or 20, maybe. I think it was 19. And she just sat there having a conversation with me, completely knowing exactly what I had been doing. I mean, let's not, I'm not going to split hairs here. This is the kind of person that she was. She, she is the type of person who is like, I'm sorry, but fuck you. I'm the most important person in the room. And what you're doing doesn't matter. And I don't care. So very much like Gabriel in that first chapter. Not that Gabriel actually knew. Gabriel was in, was completely oblivious. My future mother-in-law was not. So. Yeah. 
So as soon as as soon as Gabriel walked in, it was just like, oh, I'm just gonna come in here, and then, you know, I don't care what's going on around me because pfft, whatever. Yeah, like 100% reminded me of my ex mother in law, <laughs> who probably knows exactly about this channel, and I don't really give a shit anymore. So, but those were holy shit. All three of those were. Fucking amazing. <laughs> Whew. All three of them were amazing. Gabriel masturbating, yoga, and I need to talk to God and it's going to happen through your dick. <laughs> That's fucking awesome. So, this is a very long video, but it was three chapters. I don't care you're gonna watch or you're not gonna watch so thank you for joining me for drunk story time with kfish and i will see you in the next video